Greetings and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV. Let's get right into it. This segment is about the article that was written on April 14th, 2022 from the Chicago Tribune and WTTW Crime and Law. They put out an article stating that the judge denied R. Kelly request to delay sentencing in New York case. A federal judge has refused to delay R. Kelly's sentencing on racketeering and other charges in New York until after his upcoming Chicago trial, despite the singer's grave concerns that not doing so could interfere with his Fifth Amendment guarantees. So in doing this, what's going to happen is they're going to sentence him concurrently or consecutively. Um, we have concurrent consecutive and double punishment. So we're going to go over that. Let's define what concurrent, consecutive, and double punishment is defined as. Um, so they're going to do one sentencing, and then they're going to have another hearing, and another trial, and then another sentencing. Well, another trial, then a conviction or a non-conviction, and then a sentencing or remanding of the sentence. Um, he can always, uh, re, uh, he can always appeal this. So it's just going to take a little bit longer to, um, to gather everything where we feel comfortable that he's going to be returning soon. Now, according to a primary source in criminal law, judges often have the discretion to decide whether to give defendants who are convicted of separate crimes concurrent or consecutive sentencing. The decision can come up when the defendant is convicted of multiple offenses in the same case. So concurrent and consecutive sentencing are as follows. If a defendant is convicted of a number of crimes that carry lengthy prison terms, the difference between consecutive and concurrent sentencing can be tremendous. Concurrent sentences is when sentences run concurrently. Defendants serve all the sentences at the same time. Or consecutive. When sentences run consecutively, defendants have to finish serving the sentence for one offense before they start serving sentence for any other offense. And that's where um, we feel that the double jeopardy clause can, can be inputted here because if they give him a sentence and then turn around and reconvict him for another, in another state, that can be that consecutive sentencing. Um, so before they start serving the sentence for any other offense, they have to serve this sentence. So the same factors that judges tend to consider when deciding on the severity of the sentence, for example, a defendant's past record, also affects their decision on whether to give concurrent or consecutive sentencing. Some criminal statutes, however, require that the sentence for the crime in question be served consecutively to any other crime committed in the same incident. So we're going to go back to the article. So in this five page ruling published Thursday, the U.S. District Court Judge Ann Donnelly denied a request to delay the June hearing after Kelly's legal team said he may be forced to choose between presenting mitigation at sentencing and preserving his Fifth Amendment rights before his next trial in August 2022. Donnelly, who had already previously ruled against a similar request from the defense, found that argument was not persuasive. It's not persuasive because it will be too long of a gap between catching him and keeping him in the system, the criminal justice system, and a year could bring a lot of changes in the case. People can come forth and say that they they lied on the stand. People could come across and say that, you know, you know, they can take away the evidence at some point. In this case, the jury returned his verdict September 27th, 2021. The practical effect of granting the defendant's request would mean that sentencing would take a place would take place about a year after the jury's verdict.
She wrote, the defendant's concerns do not justify the significant delay in sentencing that his request entails. They want to get him. They want to get him very bad because, you know, new evidence can strike up and he can request an appeal, but it has to be in a timely fashion and it has to go to the correct courts. Um, so a New York jury found Kelly guilty on nine counts, including racketeering on his second day of deliberations last year. The following month, U.S. District Lu- Lewin Weber ordered Kelly to stand trial in Chicago on child porn and obstruction of justice charges in August 2022. Following his conviction, Kelly faces the possibility of decades in prison for crimes, including violating the Mann Act and anti-sex trafficking law that prohibits taking anyone across state lines for any immoral purposes. So they want to really drive that home in our minds that, yeah, you know, he's going to be in prison for life. And we have to keep our beliefs stronger than what these words are saying here. But we're just revisiting this information which has been already tainted in the minds of individuals. We're just revisiting it to get some form of understanding because we know what's really going on here. Now, federal prosecutors have opposed any delay in sentencing, arguing that Kelly is not being compelled, in quote, quote, compelled to say anything, in quote. Now, that is the response that Attorney Jennifer Bonjean has stated that it has to be compelling um, and it has to be, she had three statements that she said, but compelling was one of the words. So they're going to reuse her words to say that arguing that Kelly is not compelled to say anything at his sentencing. Instead, he is potentially choosing to do so. So he pled the fifth. Now he is going to speak And um, they're saying that he's not compelled. He's not being forced to speak. He's choosing to do so on his own. As As proven at trial, the defendant engaged in wide ranging and extensive criminal conduct involving multiple victims, quote, victims with impunity for decades. Prosecutor said earlier this month, his victims have waited years to see the defendant held to account and sentenced for his crimes. Kelly, who was born Robert Sylvester Kelly, is also facing four separate indictments alleging sexual abuse in the state court in Chicago and a child prostitution charge in Minnesota. He continued to be held at a federal lockup in Brooklyn. So um, this is where... This is where it's headed. And basically she's saying, you know, she's not going to allow the sentencing to go uh, after the Chicago trial, which in the prosecution's eyes makes sense because they're trying to railroad him. And so now what we have to do, like I said, is keep our emotions in check, keep ourselves balanced mentally do our research and watch everything that happens and how it goes down. Because again, the appeal process is there. So we do have hope. There is hope, but we have to believe and know in the midst of all this craziness that all will turn out in the favor of Robert Sylvester Kelly because of what has been done to him. So keep him in your prayers, keep him uplifted, continue to say positive things online about him so that this too shall pass. I thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, and joining this podcast. Please share this video and um, we will see you next time. And as always, keep it 100.